Hello and welcome to this instructional video on how a basic page loads with ServLoop. Uh, this open data engine started with the database design aspects and grew into the survey generation and then a content management system because the separate pages were easier to print out than a multi-page complex survey. So each page in the system is stored as a branching tree of nodes in the database and this tutorial is going to show how we go from a URL in the browser to delivering content from a very big picture point of view. Hopefully you won't have to spend too much time in these specific parts of the system unless you're helping upgrade it, but it is helpful to know the general paths that ServLoop and Laravel will take to deliver the content. Laravel knows to look through our roots file and uh, you'll see here it's mostly just including other more specific files. So there's a lot of roots up here that go to specific admin pages, which I hope to eventually replace with ServLoop generated content. But this final roots page has a lot of the wildcards where the page is controlled by content in the database totally dynamically. So in this case, uh, we're hitting the, one of these final, final root options, a wildcard for a general page slug. And this is gonna open up our ServLoop class and the the function in there is load page URL so if we open up serveloop.php we can control F for load page URL and see the function that it is calling so with every page load the function being referred to by the routing file will send the function a request object this is an object from the illuminate engine and it has all the post and get data from the page load. Uh, like if we had question mark refresh equals one up there, it would be passed through there, as well as uh, form content past this post data perhaps. Um, next, uh, in this case, we are passing a parameter, a variable called page slug. Uh, so this is gonna be, this string uh, is gonna be passed to this function as the second parameter. And in this case, we're not using the other parameters. Those are for other types of routes. Um, but in this case, the page slug is gonna be this, how a basic page loads with ServLoop. So next it's gonna search for this page slug in the trees table in the database. And this function is load tree by slug is in the page load utils class. Search in the database if it finds one and it's okay to load it, uh, then we're gonna sync data trees. This loads up what I call the globals trunk, which includes a handful of classes uh, which extend each other um, and stack to provide a bunch of different data lookups and utility functions which are needed throughout the system. Oftentimes these are functions which I want accessible both through the controllers and the views. Uh, sometimes views are deeply nested and I don't want to pass variables 10 deep um, to be able to make uh, decisions during any logic that happens in the views, for example. Now that we've loaded globals, the next big thing that happens is load loop. Um, this is a function in a small class called serve cust loop. So the custom serve loop org extension of the core engine is then loaded into this object we call cust loop from the routing trunk of the engine, which starts with page load utils. Now we've got cust loop loaded from serveloop.php. The next significant thing that happens in this page load is a check for a cache. We're going to check if we can deliver a cache version of this page first, uh, assuming that this tree allows that. Uh, more dynamic pages can be flagged as not cacheable to make sure that they're not showing old data. In this case, you probably got a cache because, <laughs> because somebody loaded this page in the last few days before you probably. If there is a match for the cache, then the process ends here and we return the full results of the page which have been cached and we're gonna add any admin code that needs to be added for the current user dynamically. But for the more interesting case where we're not delivering a cache, how does this page load? So in this case, the next significant thing that happens is that we're loading the page content into a variable called page content here uh, from our cust loop and calling a function called index. Index can be found in treeserve.php. And one of the first thing that it will call is serve loop init. 
serve loop init is uh, it can be found in serve loop controller.php and initializes a bunch of variables and user variables, sets the current page for what we're looking at, loads the navigation menu related to the current page information, and it will also call a uh, init extra function. This is left blank by default in the service uh, in the serve loop engine so that it can be overwritten by client engines to run extra configurations that are needed for every page load. It's worth mentioning that a lot of the, the variables stored in this tree trunk are stored in a variable called v. v is an array of variables that might be simple or complex, which might be needed within the views. So the v variable is often passed into the views so they have full access to all these values. Moving on, after we've initialized our tree trunk, the next significant thing that happens on this page load is the calling of print tree public. This function is the one that traverses the tree to print out the content. It'll be stored in the, the view variable content, which is then going to be later passed into the main master view. So if we look at print tree public, you'll see it has a lot to think about in traversing this tree. But one of the key things that it's going to do is to call print node public. This call right here is printing the root node for the whole tree, which will then recursively print all the nodes in the tree that should be printed. And return this as one uh, string that's fed into this ret variable to be returned by this function back out to the index function where it is assigned to content in the v variable. So now the main body of the, the page content is stored in this variable. Uh, we're going to do a scraping of JavaScript and CSS once more. This happens on a node to node level too, I believe. Um, but we're doing it one more time uh, on the content before we cache it. This will scrape all the JavaScript and CSS, consolidate it, minify it, and uh, make it as separate resource files uh, to be loaded with the page. Finally, we're passing the v variable to our master template. So here in the master site template, uh, you'll see the whole layout, the HTML layout for the, the pages. Uh, both the public areas and the admin areas are merged into this master file right now. And you'll see our main content is printed out down here. It, uh, it, it receives the content uh, as, a, as a variable. Uh, dollar sign content shows up as a variable here because it was passed in as a content here. So there's an array and the string content maps to this uh, big chunk of HTML content. So that's dumped out here. Then it's wrapped in the page layout based on current settings. So all of that is returned back to <laughs> serveloop.php uh, where it has been, we have a full page including the, the metadata and, and the full site layout is now stored in this variable page content uh, where it can then be cached for next time, presuming this tree allows caches. And then finally it can be returned to the user and printed to the browser. Whew. So that is how we finally got this whole beautiful page printed. And on this page we've got one caveat that this node with the documentation navigation has been overridden uh, with some custom node printing. So one way we can find this is to um, edit the page if we're logged in as an admin. And we can see here um, this is node number 3088. If we go into our client file, we'll see 3088 here. And uh, we'll know that this is being overridden by this custom node print function, which is relying on a, another function to help generate the navigation. So similar to the init extra function, this is one of the first ways that the serve loop engine gets customized for client installations. All right, that's all for now. I look forward to providing more documentation as we go forward. Thanks so much.